With the new Minecraft update nearing the horizon, the cycle of updates has been hot on my mind. Game devs adding new features both personal and community source to make a game objectively better. It's an all-around harmony between player and creator. Or so we thought. A few weeks ago, I stumbled upon this website. It details all of the suggestions that Mojang officially considered and then put in the bin for good. It's like a graveyard of community creativity, being trash compacted by the devs who want their game to remain pure and clean. Okay, so it's not that bad. Mojang actually make a lot of really good reasons as to why some of these features will never see the light of day. In fact, a company that stands behind its design principles is one that is sure to always produce a game of integrity and quality, even if they aren't abiding by the community's biggest wishes. So, what I thought we could do today is go over some of the most requested features ever in Minecraft, and replicate them using mods, to see what the game could have really been like had Mojang gone another route. A link to all the mods used will be in the description below. So, here are five updates never coming to Minecraft. Mojang have been very adamant about our first pick today. You'd think for a game designed solely on putting a bunch of cubes together to make bigger cubes, they'd be fine adding some, well, smaller cubes to add textures to the bunch. Mojang have gone on record to specifically state they won't add features that inhibit natural creativity or can already be done in other ways. Unfortunately, this includes our vertical slabs and all variations of them. Personally, and I know to most of the community as well, I don't think this one holds any ground. How on earth would rotating a slab 90 degrees inhibit natural creativity? If anything, it would allow worlds to look more naturally beautiful. Imagine all the texturing you could add to a mountain using both vertical and horizontal slabs. I mean, you could add these little cliff faces here, these little rocky joints to make it look like it's, it's actually climbable and just a bit more texture like that. But time and time again, Mojang have shut this one down, asking for no more threads to be made about repeat decline suggestions such as this one. Of course, if you're a vanilla plus player like myself, then you already have cork installed in every mod pack you play. So you can enjoy this feature to your heart's content. I mean, how cool are combining vertical slabs together? Come on, Mojang. Our next stop takes us to the good old fences and pressure plate combo, or if you're not a fan of that, then maybe a set of stairs and two signs? How about a cauldron with a lever on top of it? Man, this is pretty much a sink already. Furniture is something that people have been trying to replicate in Minecraft since the game was first released, but even though many have asked for specific table and chair blocks to be added, Mojang refers them to the same principle as the vertical slabs. Features that inhibit natural creativity or can already be done in other ways are not being considered. And you know what, Mojang? For this suggestion, that hill you're dying on actually makes sense. If you really want to let players expand their creativity and imagination, giving them a bunch of oddly shaped blocks, like signs, chains, and trap doors, will in fact lead to players thinking outside the box to set up their dream pad. Of course, using Mr. Crayfish's furniture mod, we can imagine what deliberate furniture blocks would look like. And although I do enjoy them, I think I can understand Mojang's point of view for wanting to keep furniture in the eye of the beholder. Okay, this next one is absolutely a stretch, and I'm not sure why it's been suggested so often that Mojang had to specifically post about it. I guess bows and crossbows aren't good enough for players trying to replicate Agent 47, and would much rather take a stronger approach. There's not much to say here other than guns would absolutely not fit in a blocky, passive world of creations and creatures. Heck, even on design principles alone, Mojang would never allow them. They are so against killing passive mobs that there's no way they'd ever add weapons of mass destruction to encourage violent behavior like this. Fortunately, if you want your fix of contesting B in Minecraft, Mr. Crayfish also has you covered, adding a whole arsenal of weapons into the game. A man that makes furniture and guns? What can't he do? Although biomes are usually a pretty hot topic when it comes to Minecraft, especially since we got the biome vote back in 2018, Mojang are never ones to shy away from representing real-world climates within their sandbox game. However, if it doesn't make sense to add something specific, say, like a redwood forest, then they're also very clear on where that line is. For our towering trees, the specific reasoning is that Mojang believe the redwood forest is actually too close to the mega taiga, or old growth taiga as it's now known. Again, this one kind of makes sense, but at the same time, does it? Mojang already have loads of deviations and subtypes when it comes to biomes. Take for example, the mountain biomes. They are actually made up 
of jagged peaks, stony peaks, frozen peaks, snowy slopes, windswept hills, and windswept gravelly hills, just to name a few. And while they do have their differences, to the untrained eye as an average Minecraft player, you might just loop them all into mountain and be a little surprised when you see some snow on some peaks and trees on another. So surely Mojang could just include a denser, taller variant of the old growth taiga as well? Biomes Aplenty gives us a really extreme example of what this could look like, but I don't think Mojang are gonna budge on this one. It's a shame, because these trees give a sense of grandeur that's only really replicable in the new massive caverns added in Caves and Cliffs Part 2. Ever see some structures in Minecraft and just hope with all your blocky little heart that they will be updated to better reflect the modern vision for the game? I'm sure we could all name more than a few at the top of our lists, but at the top of Mojang's for sticking to the status quo is, strangely, the Witch Hut. With the explanation being simply that Witch Huts are fine as they are. They weren't meant to have added chests or other features, and were just a way to fill out the world. This is a fine stance, but we can still dream big. And that's exactly what Young has done for us today. You may know this fabulous mod developer from mods such as Young's Better Mineshafts, but this tireless soul also goes around updating a whole array of Minecraft structures. His Witch Hut update gives us a glance at what could be if Mojang ever wanted to explore witches as more than just a nuisance to the player, including hints at the vanilla brewing mechanics, which aren't very detailed in base Minecraft. As a side note, this mod also adds these cute little witch circles into the game, and I think they fit the world perfectly for its aesthetics. What a cool little structure to stumble upon, and also breathe a bit more identity into the witch. So, definitely some sad news for some fan favorites in there, but for most of the declined updates, Mojang have fairly understandable reasons, or at least stuck to their design mantra. Most of the updates. Looking at you again, slabs. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's video on 5 updates never coming to Minecraft. What do you think about some of these features? Do they make sense to not be added to the game? Or are you yearning for the days you can build toilets in vanilla Minecraft? Let me know in the comments below. And how would you guys feel about a part 2? There's a bunch more interesting updates Mojang has declined, like my beloved timer block, and I could definitely cover more in another video. As always, remember to leave a like if you enjoy this type of content, and stay subscribed for more Minecraft analyses and command block videos. If you're itching to see more, we have some longer behind-the-scenes content available on my Patreon right now, as well as an exclusive data pack, with unique armor set bonuses for my highest patrons. Until next time, guys, see ya!